What is going on, good people of YouTube? You've guessed it. It's that time again. I am Big Will McKinney. And welcome back to Smokehouse Talks. This is the place where we talk and teach all things pipe smoking. Again, I want to welcome you back today. I got a, a, a interesting topic I saw in one of my comments on a previous video um, about uh, moist tobacco uh, for your pipe and it not staying lit and that type of thing. So I want to talk about that a little bit today. Um, usually when you deal with aromatics, okay, and pipe smoking, and aromatics are your flavored. When you see like um, cherry vanilla or you see peach something or mountain cherry or something like that, that cherry um, uh, taste or aroma um, is because they spray it, uh, they spray the, the tobacco with something called a casing or flavoring, right? And they allow it to cure a little bit and they pack it. Now, as a result of doing that, that leaves your tobacco a little moist, okay? Um, and you really do get that a lot in your aromatics or, or your flavored type tobaccos. So one thing that you can do, and I got this off of another video, I can't think of the guy um, that I got it from, but one thing you can do to help that um, is, like I have my, my pouch here. OK, and I'll get tobacco from the store and I'll throw it in my pouch. But before I put it in my pouch, I will just set it out like the, the tobacco comes in like a, a little baggie. So you can buy it from the tobacco store. You take it home, pull it out of the bag and just like, you know, put it on a piece of paper or somewhere out of the way on the table and just let it air dry a little more. I find that it takes. Oh, my God, a few hours and you can really see the difference um, from the time that you purchased it from the store until you put it in your pipe. So that's one thing you can do with a moist tobacco. Um, and what you're going to find by doing that is that it's going to stay lit longer, number one, because with a moist uh, tobacco, you have to constantly go back at it uh, with your lighter. So before I load my pouch. I'll take the tobacco from the store, uh, especially if it's a, and I do smoke uh, aromatics here and there, um, or any type of tobacco. If it is, if it's moist, uh, by and large, it's going to be aromatics. But I've gotten, I've gotten Cavendishes that were kind of moist, and I'm really actually learning to do this with any one of my uh, tobaccos because I'm starting to accumulate uh, more of it. Um, but yeah, you just bring it home and just set it out for a few hours and let it air dry a little more. I've even set them out overnight, uh, like the whole bag, just pour it out, maybe put a little in my pouch to smoke throughout the day. And then when I come back to it in a few hours or the next day, you know what? It's good and ready to go. Okay. So that's just a tip. When you get a moist type of tobacco, whether it's an aromatic or not, all you got to do is just... Sprinkle it out on the table or a piece of paper or something and just let it sit in the air or the atmosphere um, uh, for a few hours to 24 hours or however long you want to sit it there. And it'll definitely um, dry it out a little more, making it a much better smoke in your pipe. OK, so I hope that helps. Um, listen, stick around. I got a new segment uh, that is coming right behind this one. It's called the Smokehouse Lounge, right? So we're going to do a little bit of instructional stuff in the beginning, and then we're going to switch gears and kind of light our pipes up and talk about some trending topics of today. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, just kind of switching gears, trying out some new things here. So stick around and stay tuned. It's going to be hot. Always remember, I am Big Will McKinney, and this is Smokehouse Talks, the not real version of the Smokehouse Lounge. Yeah, here we go, Smokehouse Lounge. At first we had, the first part of the videos would be Smokehouse Talks, which would be our instructional part, and then this last part, we will call it the Smokehouse Lounge. Yeah, I like that, Smokehouse Lounge, right? 
So, in case you're wondering what I'm smoking on tonight, um, it is called Lazy Day. It is a combination of Latakia, Burley, and Cavendish. If you haven't smoked Latakia, oh my gosh, man, you don't know what you're missing. I tried it for the first time. I didn't like it. It's a Syrian uh, uh, tobacco. Didn't like it at first. Uh, tried it again, uh, and it kind of grew on me. But it is a awesome tobacco. Um, has a very distinct flavor and taste to it. So, Latakia, next time you're at your smoke shop, pick some of this up, this stuff is hot. So, um, I don't know if you guys have heard about this whole Deion Sanders thing that's going on. And if you're not familiar with Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders is a uh, ex-NFL player turned college pro. And what makes that kind of unique is that Dion went to a HBCU uh, to coach. And he recently took a job with the Colorado Buffaloes. Now, that is all in the news here lately. And let's talk about why. Mm. Mm hmm Mm. So, my man takes this job, right, at an HBCU. And HBCUs, by and large, are not known for their football programs, not like an Ohio State or an Alabama or anything like that. Um, if I'm going to be honest, um, I know them basically for their bands and their Greek life. Um, uh, it's, it's nothing. And I've heard people say this on countless occasions that, you know what, we're not really concerned with the football, but we want to be there at halftime to check the bands out. And I don't want to say anything or, or lack on any type of comment about their academics. I just found out recently that they churn out more doctors and engineers. I mean, they're, they're really competitive, uh, when it comes to that thing, but by and large, um, the historically black colleges are known for, uh, and this is solely what I've heard, I've never attended one, but they're known for their Greek life and their, um, their bands, their bands, they have really good bands. So Dion comes down and he takes this job and apparently uh, there was some challenges, um, ongoing challenges. They didn't have the right uniforms. The field was was um, in not good shape um, at all. Um, and a lot of other things going on. So Dion um, was being paid, I think his contract was 300000 He's being paid that and he takes some of his salary and uh, not only some of his salaries, but some of his salary, but his relationships uh, that he's culminated uh, in the years of the NFL and and that type of thing. And he really started helping the program out. Not to mention the fact, mm, not to mention the fact that he took them to the championship in their dis division two years in a row. So he really upped the program uh, considerably during his time there. Now, here's where the contention starts. <sighs> they said when he hired in there, and I've seen the interviews, I've seen the interviews where he kind of alluded to the fact that he was going to be there for the long run and bring the... Uh, bring the prominence of um, uh, HBCUs, um, bring it up from where it was. And the people are talking like that was going to take a considerable time to do. So when he takes this job to go to Colorado for considerably more money, I think that his contract is $5 million 
uh, over, oh, I can't think of the years, but you can, you can YouTube it or Google it, it'll tell you. But that's considerably more than 300,000. Um, so the contention was that, well, you promised us that you were going to stay here and build the program up. And then you will, and I guess in, in, in some recent interview, he was quoted as saying, uh, this is the, me coming here, um, was, was a calling from God. And so he invoked, uh, a deity into the whole dynamic and that has people up in arms. Um, so he takes the job and a lot of contention around that. That should he have taken the job? Should he have kept his word? And so I don't know, man. Here's here's my take on that. And you guys can tell me whatever you think in the comments, please. My take on it is he did do exactly what he said he was going to do. He improved the program. He improved the program tremendously. And he did that at his own expense. In some uh, instances, he improved the, he took his own money out and redid something with the field, used his own money on uniforms, things of that nature. Not to mention the fact that it's a winning program in less than five years. And that man did that. So I get, I get them saying that he said he was going to stay and improve the program. But is it me or did he do that? Didn't he improve the program? And here's my take. You know, you need endowments and you need uh, all kinds of things on a university level uh, to make the, 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 the wheel spin, uh, so to speak. Um, and that can't be done with one man. Now, one man showed you that he could do it, but he shouldn't be solely responsible that for that, particularly when years prior, um, that thing wasn't getting done. And here's another thing I think about that. What about, what about, my dad used to say, mm, can't get my stuff going. Mm. My dad used to say that no one has to do anything for you. So when someone does something for you, you need to be appreciative of that, right? So that's kind of my take. Like, even if he, if he stayed there two years, again, he dramatically improved the program. So where is Jackson States and other people who are against his move? Where is the grace in that that says that, you know what? You have an opportunity to go further and do better for you and your family. You've helped us out. You've, hit, you've improved our program dramatically. You helped us out. So if you have an opportunity now to go a little further and do a little better and create some opportunity, um, uh, because that was the big thing, too, that, you know, you're creating opportunity for um, uh, uh, players, black players, that they wouldn't normally necessarily have at other institutions. <sighs> okay. So he can still do that at Colorado, can he? Can he still recruit uh, kids that, uh, by and large, your Ohio State's, Alabama's, uh, probably uh, would, you know, wouldn't look at first or wouldn't even take a second glance at? He's already, as a matter of fact, taken as an assistant coach a head coach uh, from an HBCU. So it just kind of seems to me that he is improving the program continually, even though he's not there. And he most certainly did that during his time there. So I just don't get it. And maybe you guys can tell me something. I admit it. I get it. I get it. He said he was going to stay and he said he was going to do this and he was going to do that. But the little bit that he did do was a drastic improvement from what was there before. So where's the grace? Where's the grace to say that, you know what, you did us a solid, you did us good. So you know what, we wish you well. Go on and get your bag, man. Go on and create some, gen I had somebody tell me, a friend of mine, mm, 
don't have my tail. A friend of mine told me, <laughs> one of my coworkers told me, he don't need the money. He don't even need the money. Well, when do we start counting people's bags? And how do we know what type of money they need? See, at our level, you know, it may, but when you get into millions and millions of dollars, that's paying college for your children and grandchildren. That is setting up generational type wealth. So with what he did, why shouldn't he have the opportunity to do that? That's just my take on it. So maybe you guys see it a little differently. Um, listen, when we talk or when I talk to folks, I respect all opinions. I don't think that I am any more right than anybody else. I like to use um, interactions and conversation as a way of learning. So please don't come on my comments and call me names and all of that type of stuff that usually goes on on these channels. I really want some feedback, right? And we can talk about this, share some ideas. You can bring some things to light that maybe I'm not aware of. Um, maybe I've brought some things to light that you were not aware of. But I really enjoy the idea of conversation uh, and being uh, disagree or, or being uh, not agreeing without being nasty and and just crazy. I hate when conversation um, just dives into just crazy and you can't have a, excuse me, step Tito's. Um, you can't have a, a, a thought uh, that is different without it turning into name calling and arguing. And listen, I like to have these exchanges to learn and to grow. So that's what I'm looking to do with this segment of my channel. So thank you for joining me at the Smokehouse Lounge. We're going to be back with another trending topic soon. Listen, again, be sure to hit the like button, uh, subscribe to my channel for the YouTube algorithm so this thing can get out in front of more people. As always, I am Big Will McKinney, and this has been the Smokehouse Lounge. <laughs>